HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, a longtime officer for the Hopkinton Police Department is retiring after 38 years of service. Ashland Legion Baseball picked up a few wins in the final week of the season and we have highlights of the 10th annual Lake Maspinock Preservation Association July 4th Boat Parade plus much more. But first, here are some happenings in Hopkinton you should know about. The Board of Selectmen held a public forum to discuss town trash and recycling. The current contract expires June 30th and automated trash and recycling is an option going forward. We received three options from E.L. Harvey and the option that we're recommending is the automated collection of both municipal solid waste, trash, and recyclables. The 110 Grill is officially open for business in the Lumber Street Plaza. A ribbon cutting ceremony was held to welcome the business to town. Many different trees, flowers, and plants were installed at the West Main Street median, entering town from 495 or coming towards town from the Price Chopper Plaza. The goal of the project was to create a nice scenic landscape at one of the gateways into Hopkinton. This goes back to probably two and a half, three years ago with Ken Driscoll from Select Energy. It was his idea. Um, he got a group of us together, uh, mostly Chamber of Commerce members, uh, and we talked about uh, the idea. And the idea was to really beautify the entrance or the gateway to Hopkinton. H Camp Station Manager Jim Cousins, along with his daughter, will be biking 30 miles in La Crosse, Wisconsin at the JDRF Ride to Cure Diabetes. So my daughter was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes several years ago and our family typically does something to help support the JDRF, which is doing great work to try to cure type 1 diabetes. Do you have a cause you are involved with and would like to promote it on HCAM? Email us, news at hcam.tv. Hopkinton's newest firefighter was recently welcomed to the department. Zach Ingram had his first day with the Hopkinton Fire Department last week. HCAM cameraman Andrew Hayes filmed the flotilla on Lake Maspinock during the 2016 LMPA boat parade. This photo was courtesy of Darlene Hayes. Planning board members rode their political machine in this year's Horribles Parade. This photo is courtesy of Nancy Draw. The Jazz Q Group kicked off the Hopkinton Center for the Arts Sunset Jazz Series. This photo is courtesy of HCAM crew member John Ritz. Shay Roden sold lemonade in front of the Hopkinton Police Station to benefit the Boston Children's Hospital last week. This photo is courtesy of Hopkinton resident Heather Pye. The town of Hopkinton welcomed their latest addition to the fire department, a ladder truck. Prior to the addition, the Hopkinton Fire Department relied on Ashland's Fire Department for use of their ladder truck. The Sharon Timlin Memorial 5K race to cure ALS took place once again in Hopkinton. The event keeps on growing and growing, as this year nearly 1,600 runners and walkers took part in the race. The event was created in honor of the mother of former Boston Red Sox pitcher Mike Timlin, Sharon Timlin, who passed away from Lou Gehrig's disease, otherwise known as ALS, in March 2002. Well, this race came about, uh, my mom passed away in 2002, and uh, we met some of the, the race directors and, and some people from Hopkinton and just kind of put this together. And now it's in her memorial. 
that we're trying to fight ALS, and we've lost a few friends along the way, but uh, we're really trying to, you know, destroy this disease with everything we can. Come out here, people, they faithfully come year and year. For these stories and more, check out our website, hcam.tv. After 38 years of service, Officer Thomas Griffin will be retiring from the Hopkinton Police Department. Chief Edward Lee and the selectmen were full of compliments for the officer, who has contributed to the department and community in a number of ways. Before honoring longtime Hopkinton police officer Thomas Griffin, Chief Edward Lee took a moment to thank the community for the overwhelming support the department has received in what has been a very difficult time for police and citizens throughout the country. But this week has been, as I said, overwhelming with the amount of gifts that come, came to the police uh, station, cards, people showing up, a lot of food at the station, and... Uh, it comes as a surprise to you, but I'm a big fan of food. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 I have no comment, Chief Lee. <laughs> <laughs> but what is even uh, better than food, not much, but is when a citizen comes up to you, and I've had the opportunity several times this week where people just come up to you and shake your hand and say thank you for you and your department, and thanks for keeping us uh, safe, and most of all, we appreciate what you do. Chief Lee then listed off the many programs and contributions Officer Griffin has made to the department. And, uh, everybody, I wanted to recognize Chris as well because she's done 38 years of a police officer's wife, and that's no easy job. Just ask my wife, although there's probably other reasons why my wife would say that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, so Tom has worked several decades, and he is the one of the most dedicated police officers I ever met. As a matter of fact, he doesn't want to leave. He has to leave because of his age. I won't mention that, but people. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, he's one of a kind. When I first got on, he, uh, he was, you know, a great help to me. He was like my FTO, when I, uh, which he is an FTO field training officer, and he drove me around town. He told me the history of the whole town, and he knew it all. I mean, he's seen it all in police work. He's seen over the decades the changing, the several different programs, how law enforcement has re reacted to different things. So I'm sure there's not a story, and he has a lot of stories, <laughs> good ones too, that he could expound upon. But um, one th thing is, is the amount of extra things he does for the police department. And uh, he's going to be impossible to replace. Well, well, we're doing our best, but we have at least five officers stepping up to take on some of the responsibilities that he handled on his own. Let me just uh, mention a few of them. As I mentioned before, an FTO uh, field training officer, and he's done that for uh, several years. Uh, he took the uh, responsibility of being the liaison for the regional jail diversion program that we currently have in town, and uh, he's done an outstanding job with this and uh, worked with our mental health advocate and uh, other towns along with the uh, uh, department of mental health and they have nothing but high praise for him it just I, I mean i could go on the amount of duties but we don't have <laughs> enough time but let me say a little bit about tom he is uh let me just say they broke the mold when they made something like this he's he's one tough guy As a matter of fact last year uh tom was complaining about a shoulder pain but you know still showed up every day for work you know, obviously he was showing some discomfort, and then finally when he was egged enough to go to the doctors, he came back with a note, very disappointed, I'm gonna have to miss a few days. Uh, next few days I broke my shoulder. <laughs> so that's what kind of commitment and toughness he is. Actually about a month ago, Tom and I responded to an emergent situation, and uh, we had to gain access to the house, and next thing you know, I see a flash go by me, smashing through the door, and lost his Tom. <laughs> But, uh, you know, he's just the, uh, he has a, he's an, uh, an incredible police officer. And like I say, 38 years, what can you say about that? Unbelievable. Also a fierce uh, uh, negotiator for the union. You can normally can testify to that. <laughs> but we're certainly going to miss him. Uh, we're glad that he's going to stick around as a special so we can still go to him for some advice and, uh, and uh, just to see your face around. And uh, we're going to miss him. I miss you guys. I won't be gone. <laughs> Thank you, Chief. Um, 
thank you everybody that's here. I didn't write a speech. Uh, I'm just going to say a few words from the heart, and I'll make it quick. Uh, it's, it's been a great career. I've worked with the best people in the world, the best people in the business. I believe that um, we're the best department around, and you hear that from other departments too. It's been a pleasure to work with everybody on the department, within the boards, and I just want to thank everybody for giving me the opportunity to do that, and for the whole town for putting their trust in me to do this job for all these years. Thank you. Congratulations on a terrific career, and thank you for your service, Officer Griffin. To see more of the dedication to Officer Thomas Griffin at the Selectman meeting, visit our website, hcam.tv. It is now time for our Pets of the Month, and recently, Greyhound Friends introduced me to a couple of very nice hounds named Boots and Cooper who are looking for a home. This is uh, Boots who is from Ireland, actually. It's an Irish dog. Um, very, um, very sweet, outgoing. I would be uh, good with other dogs. We're not sure about cats. Most of the Irish dogs aren't, aren't cat friendly. But he, uh, yeah, he came over with another greyhound. We bring a few over, a few greyhounds, Irish greyhounds over to uh, uh, represent all of the uh, all the other greyhounds there that uh, don't really have anywhere near as much chance of being adopted as, as greyhounds do here. He uh, just he's a he's a good boy. Needs to learn you know some of the basics, but uh, but will be uh, will be a great dog. How old is he? Um, the Irish dogs have letters in their ears. The American dogs have numbers, so it's easier to tell how old they are. Um, I would say that he's three. He's three years old. And a, uh, a good dog. Be a good girl. Uh, Cooper is... Um, looks like she was born in 2013. She's uh, just got spayed this week. We have a little surgery here at the kennel, so we can do... Uh, Spay neuters here. Uh, nice, quiet, calm dog. She'd be great for uh, taking for walks. She doesn't doesn't seem to be, uh, be at all bothered by other dogs. We're not. We haven't tested her with cats yet. But she uh, she's just a, a, the good-natured, companionable, beautiful. She has sort of the the greyhound uh, uh, Maybelline look with uh, permanent Maybelline, with uh, just beautiful, beautiful markings. Nice girl. For more information about the dogs available at Greyhound Friends, head over to their website, greyhoundfds.org. Coming up on HCAM News, Courtney will get you up to date with everything coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. We'll get you caught up with what's happening with Ashland Legion Baseball, and we'll bring you highlights from the 10th Lake Maspinog Preservation Association July 4th Boat Parade. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Do you have what it takes? make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together.
utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. Ashland Legion Baseball featured a young team this year that has gained a lot of experience throughout the season. Despite only having one win heading into their final week, they ended the year on a high note with a few more wins. On Monday, July 11th, 2-10 and 1 Ashland Legion took on 2 and 9 Woburn. Woburn starting pitcher Brian Gavostos sailed through the first three innings but struggled in the fourth. That one is going to be ball four. So that is 12 out of 13 pitches that have been balls from Gavostos. And he has walked the bases loaded. And this is hit in the air. That is going to drop into left field. One run being waved around, and now another right on his tail as Obed and Porter will both score. It's 2-1, to one, post 77, a two RBI single for Jacobs. Lay left and the pitch. Turns away the hitter, and that's ball four, and another post 77 run will score. I am holding my bat unless this is a very good pitch. There's ball four, another post-77 run will score. Zach Jacobs comes around. There it is, ball four. Seventh walk of the inning for Gavostos. Matt Coughlin came in for relief. Coughlin deals. And this is hit into right center, that'll drop into the shallow outfield, one run in, another run being waved around, the throw in is off the mark, two more in for post 77. Kime and Krupe both score. Seven walks for Gavostos in what turned into a eight run fourth inning for Ashland. No runs would score after the inning as Ashland took the game eight to one. Andrew Kime had a nice start pitching five innings giving up one run. Mike Messier had a couple great defensive plays and went one for two at the plate with a walk and scored a run. The next day, Tuesday, July 12th, Ashland took on Natick and fifth place Natick was fighting for their playoff lives in this one and led comfortably throughout the game. Natick leading eight to four heading into the sixth and what would be the final inning due to darkness, Ashland down to their final three outs. What would they do? Has really had a battle throughout these innings. Has been caught up in a jam almost every inning. On the ground, up the middle, past the reach of the shortstop. Lead runner, Samir Sharma being waved around. He will come to score, and it'll put runners on the corners Four post 77, an RBI single for Babineau, and it's an eight to five ball game. With two on, one out, and one run in for Ashland, Mark Soma came in to try to close it out for Nedick. The fact that there are no lights here and it's getting dark out as this is up the middle, that's off the shortstop and a run is in. Obid comes around, an RBI single for Jacobs. Wind up and the pitch. And he will rope this into left field. That drops down. Runner being waved around. Babino is going to come around to score. It's eight to seven. An RBI single for Messier. Line up in the pitch. Swinging strike. Tominski goes down. That's the second out of the inning. It's all in the hands of Trevor DePeron now. Line up in the pitch. And this is hit in the air. And it is going to. Drop past the shortstop's glove. Runner being waved around. The throw home is going to be off the mark, and Jacobs will score the game tying run. Line up in the pitch. And it looks like they're going to give Kime the intentional pass here. Now Devin Del Camp will come up to the plate. And he's going to hit this one up the middle. It'll get through. And the winning run will come around. Messier scores. 
And it's a 9-8 victory for Post 77. They will call it due to the light. And Andrew Keim got the game-winning hit off an attempted intentional walk. Ashland pulls off the comeback and takes down Natick 9-8. Reliever Samir Sharma pitched a solid two innings and gets the victory. Center fielder Andrew Keim got the game-winning hit and was the player of the game as he went three for four at the plate, had two stolen bases, scored a run, and had an RBI as Ashland improved to 4-10 and 1 overall and played spoiler towards Natick's playoff chances. For more about Ashland Legion Baseball, be sure to check out our website, hcam.tv. You can also watch full Ashland Legion games on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash hcamtv. For the 10th year, the Lake Maspinock Preservation Association hosted the July 4th Boat Parade. Hopkinton native and HCAM contributor Andrew Hayes took one of our cameras to the middle of the action. Here are some sights and sounds of the parade with background music featuring the Hopkinton High School Band. You can see much more from the Lake Maspinock Preservation Association July 4th Boat Parade on our website and YouTube page. Summer is in full swing, and to get you up to date with our upcoming summer programming, here is Courtney Taylor with our HCAM Insider. 
Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Saturday, July 16th at 1.30 p.m., the Ashland Legion baseball game against Hudson will air. And at 2.45 p.m., it's Ashland Legion baseball versus Woburn. On Monday, July 18th at 7 p.m., acoustic trio Outrageous Fortune performs traditional folk songs on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. As evening deepens and the stars begin shining I'll take your cares and make your heart light on Tuesday, July 19th at 6.30 p.m., Hein Pickles' students perform in this second piano recital. At 7.45 p.m., the Roy Scott Big Band returns to play a combination of rock, swing, jazz, funk, and more in the Concerts on the Common. On Wednesday, July 20th at 8 p.m., Amon Hydri discusses the events and programs that take place at the Islamic Masumin Center of New England and the refugee crisis. We're trying to get our youth to go and do a, a cleanup uh, in the town of Hopkinton, yeah, you know, with with other churches and cleaning them in snow, you know, helping with the snow removal and all that. We want, once that's a small project, and then the women also getting together and they're really giving back to like on Thanksgiving Day on Christmas Day. If you want to know what we are up to here at HCAM, head on over to hcam.tv/connect to sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to know about goings on in town, check out our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Right now on our website, you can view more from the July 4th festivities in Hopkinton and the latest happenings in town. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me, news at hcam.tv. With your help, will cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and thank you for watching HCAM. HCAM is supported by our viewers and by Blackstone Valley Wealth Management, providing highly personalized financial planning, wealth management, and customized solutions through transparent, unbiased advice. Visit us at blackstonevalleywealth.com.